It has been more than a month with the Razer Buck, and while I initially ran into some software issues with Windows 11 I covered in the unboxing video, I've resolved them with a last resort factory reset, and now have been running a relatively clean Windows laptop experience. For a non-gaming laptop from a gaming company, what can you reasonably expect out of the Razer Buck? Surprisingly, Quite a lot. In the couple of months since I first unboxed this silver trimmed laptop, I've exercised a lot of my internal demons gathered from previous experiences of Razer laptops regarding hardware durability and quality control issues. Granted, I'm nowhere near having a year with this laptop under my belt, but I'm strangely confident this time that this is one of the best built laptops Razer has ever produced. From a physical material standpoint, I love the silver anodized aluminum body that has a shiny metal appearance. It's quite a simple design, but still an eye catcher. The beauty behind this look is that if you remove that Razor logo on the shell, this laptop is as business generic as you can get. However, when that lid is flipped up and that laptop is open for business, the signature Razer Chroma RGB keyboard uh, brings with it this like gaming intensity left behind where your gaming rig is at home. That signature RGB keyboard is the star of the show here as it functions and looks terrific. I wish the keys though would have had slightly more travel, but overall, they do have a good balance between being kind of mushy by laptop standards and satisfying feedback. Most people will fall in love with the setup. The glass trackpad is also quite good by window stand standards. It's, it's sizable enough to be comparable to industry leaders in this category, and it's also very responsive. It's what you would hope for on a $1,000 laptop. This is simply a versatile, portable computing machine that can adapt into every surrounding you introduced it to. Some laptops blend in at the workplace or school, and some don't. The Razer Book 13 works in any environment, and that's where this design wins me over. I don't feel overconscious with whipping out this laptop out of my bag in, uh, in the public, unlike some other gaming laptops um, with logos on them, with gaming computer brands. You know, speaking of transporting laptops, though, at 2.9 pounds, the Razer Book isn't bulky or too heavy to lift. The unibody design is sleek to fill in your hands, yet deceptively solid. I also like having a HDMI port as well as a micro SD card slot built into the laptop for functionality purposes. This in combination with two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports and a USB 3.1 port, that's just enough usability for work purposes and also potential gaming sessions outside of your home. The USB-A port lets you plug in a mouse or gaming controller, while the HDMI slot gives you access to any monitor without the need of an extra accessory like a dongle. Throw in that 3.5mm audio jack and you realistically can use the Razorbook without solely relying on Bluetooth peripherals like many modern laptops have migrated to. I'm a fan of just about everything Razer has done with the Razer Book 13 in terms of its build aspects. They did a good job here. When it comes to internal parts, the model I have is with an Intel 11th Gen Core i5 processor with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of SSD. For its intended purpose of enterprise usage, this configuration should be able to accomplish most if not all tasks. I've been using it as my Microsoft 365 beater machine, and it flows through multiple Excel sheets, documents, and browser tabs open throughout the day. Because this is aimed at being a workplace laptop though, Razer only went with an Intel Iris XE graphics card, so no dedicated, no dedicated card. As you can expect from the spec sheet, even with non-AAA title games, they require a bit of settings tweaking to have acceptable 1080p gameplay. Take New World for example, like this is a, a new game, even at low settings for everything. The Razorbook struggles to hit even 30 frames per second. A more modern game like Resident Evil 6 is essentially unplayable on anything other than the lowest settings. Even then, load times were also painful to go through on, uh, from time to time. Cutscenes would drop frames. 
I bought a bunch of games from Capcom during their Steam sale earlier this year that I haven't touched at all, and now is a good time to test it out. And some relatively older games like Strider were able to sustain full HD at 60 frames per second for a good quality run. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is also another good example of what the Razorbook can handle. 1080p at 60 frames per second consistently. Makes this machine a, a kind of like a, actually a good portable arcade fighter if paired with a fight stick, like Street Fighter would work great here too. Those examples are a pretty good measuring stick to the capabilities this hardware can handle. Fortunately for us, this Razorbook is also compatible with a variety of eGPU boxes, which I tried out with my own Gigabyte box with a RX 570 in it. This helps boost graphical performance and gives that extra versatility to users who might need it. Unlike an Apple competitor in this price range, the MacBook Air, the Razorbook 13 does indeed have a fan. It's not super noisy when you have media playing, but it is noticeable when the laptop has been on for a while or is hampered by tasks. After using the M1 MacBook Air around the studio this year, I've really been spoiled by the silent operation with relatively no compromise to the CPU processing power. It's pretty impressive there. I've come to really enjoy the Razorbook's 13.4 inch full HD display thanks to that matte screen. The lack of glare reflection is a welcome change to my daily routine of using glossy monitors. This is a sharp screen that gets moderately bright. The thin bezels around the 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen brings a clean modern look to the table. When you add in the terrific stereo speakers that shoot upwards, I can't really recall a media experience that matches what I'm experiencing here on a laptop of this price. That even accounts for the MacBook and the surfaces, the Microsoft surfaces in that $1,000 range. Audio is crisp and loud to a reasonable extent without compromising quality. It is good here. Battery life, though, is one of the only weaknesses I found to hamper the experience other than with my initial issues with Windows 11. Razer says the battery will last up to 14 hours, but that number I surmise is if you use the laptop extremely conservatively. In reality, a mix between work and play will net about like 10 to 11 hours with a display around like 75 to 100% brightness. Those are still decent numbers for an ultra bug, but Razer did include a skill set here that might help when you're working on the go. The laptop charges extremely quickly. This is a great skill set to have. Razer says you can get four hours of usage in only 30 minutes on the plug. Real world testing is actually pretty close to that estimate. It's nice to be able to add some juice in it before hitting the road. My general overall feeling is that for $999, it's a reasonable price when you account for the Razer brand tax. If the Razorbook 13 in this lowest configuration had like a starting MSRP of say $799, I'd honestly look into this as a legitimate alternative to the M1 MacBook Air as an everyman working laptop. Right now, as it is priced, it's only as good as your need for Windows as your operating system. With something like the MacBook Air on the market, most if not all of what the Razorbook does terrifically is matched or exceeded by Apple. So while I did enjoy using the Razorbook and I love the aesthetic presence of that laptop, it isn't an automatic home run simply due to what else is on the market in the same price point. The other day, my house was leaking. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do about this. I'm a tech guy. I only know tech. So how do I fix that? And then you subscribed and you fixed it. So thank you.